Okay, practice 10.3. All right, um, so the um, first two problems use this diagram. So the first one says if the measure of arc PQ is 130 degrees, so that's this arc, okay, then find the measure of arc RQ. So I'm supposed to find the measure of this one, okay? Now, we've got two different chords that are congruent here. And that means that the arcs that, um, that are related to those are also going to be congruent. So if this is x, I could also call this x. All right. And now, if you look, I've got the whole circle filled out with something or other, even though those are x's. But I know um, the whole circle is going to be 360 degrees. So now I can say x plus x plus 130 would equal 360 degrees. It should be degrees there. Okay. So 2x plus 130 degrees is 360. And I'll subtract 130. I'm kind of running out of space here. Um, but let's see. 360 minus 130 would be 230. Okay, And then I'll divide by 2. And that's going to be 115 degrees. And that is the measure of that arc then. Okay, if you add it up, 115 plus 115 plus 130 should equal 360. Okay. Now the next question also goes with this diagram, but now I've already written all over it. So I'm just going to recreate this. It would have been nice if, they, if this was just given, but it wasn't. So I'm going to make a crappy recreation there. So that I can start fresh. Whoops. Oh, no. It's not a good one. Okay, those were supposed to meet there. So this is R, P, and Q. And this one says if PR is 100 degrees, so if this one is 100 degrees down here, then find PQ. So I'm supposed to find that one here. I can use the same kind of strategy because I've got these chords that are congruent, so the related arcs would also be congruent. So now I know this is 100 degrees here. And now all three of those um, arcs around the outside would add up to 360. So yeah, x plus x, no, x plus 100 plus 100 is going to equal 360. So I'm going to subtract 200 from both sides, and x is going to come out to 160 degrees. OK, all right. And then moving on. This next one um, says solve for x. Well, um, this is a diameter. I know it's a diameter because it goes through the center of the circle and goes from one end to the other. It's also um, perpendicular to this chord. And every time that happens, every time you have a diameter that's perpendicular to a chord, it's going to bisect that chord. So that means x is going to equal 11. OK. This is the same kind of deal here. So yeah, this diameter is perpendicular to this, so yeah, it will bisect that chord, but it will also bisect the arc. So that means x is going to be 65 degrees here. Okay. And moving on to the next one, well, um, this one is interesting because um, it doesn't have the little... Um, it doesn't have the little dot there, so I actually don't know if this is a diameter. Okay, so technically this one I can't solve this one, but I have a feeling that the book I got this from forgot to put that into the diagram. We'd have to know that this is a diameter, and once we know that, well, it's um, it's going to be well, it is perpendicular to this chord, and so then it would bisect it. And then we can say 9x minus 3 would equal 7x plus 5. Okay, and I can solve for x. Subtract 7x. And I'll add 3. And divide by 2, and x comes out to 4. That's assuming that it that is a diameter, which uh, otherwise we'd be stuck. We'd have to say no solution or something like that. 
Okay. All right. Next up, determine whether AB is a diameter or not. So do I know if this is a diameter? Well, it's not marked as a diameter, but let's see if we can figure it out from the given info. Well, we know that it bisects this chord, and it's also perpendicular to that, which means that, yes, this is going to be a diameter. Okay. This next one, this AB does bisect this chord, but it's not perpendicular to it. That's not a uh, 90 degree angle right there, right? Because I've got a 103 degree angle. Right? So yeah, those aren't perpendicular. So this one is going to be a no. It has to bisect a chord and be perpendicular to it. OK, had to fix my worksheet there a little bit and fix a problem on number seven. OK, so here we go. Here's number seven. So um, this tells us a bunch of stuff in the directions. JK and LM are both 12. So these two segments are congruent to each other, and they're both 12 units. Okay. So since they're congruent to each other, that means they're going to be the same distance from the center of the circle. So that means 2x is going to equal 5x minus 12. Okay. Ultimately, we're going to find the radius of the circle, but first we're going to need to fi figure out what x equals in order to get there. So um, if 2x equals 5x minus 12, I can solve that for x pretty quickly by subtracting 5x. And dividing by negative 3. And then x will equal 4. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Okay, and then, um, so I want to find the radius of this circle. Now, I could, a radius actually, there is a radius drawn right here, but I have no way of figuring out what this little segment is right here. There's just no way to do that. Um, now, I could draw in a radius um, in a different place, like right here, but that's not really going to do me any good. What I want to do is set up a radius so that it forms a right triangle, okay? So I could put one down here, I could put one down here, here. The one I'm going to use, it doesn't really matter which one you use, but I'm just going to use this one, okay? So, um, because I've got a right angle right there, those are perpendicular, all right? And now, um, let's see what we can do with this. So, this side here is 2x, all right? So, that's np, right? So, I'll do my work up here. I already figured out that x was 4. So, now I can just do 2 times 4, and that means that this segment is 8. This piece is 8, right? That's for that part. I'm trying to figure out the sides here. Okay, and then the, the, um, the hypotenuse is going to be the radius of the circle. Okay. Now, if I can figure out what this side of it is, then I'll be in business because I can then use the Pythagorean theorem. And I can do that because I know JK, the whole thing, is 12 units. Okay, so this is 12 units across, but also this, um, this segment is, is perpendicular to that. All right, now this isn't a diameter, but you could extend this into a diameter, something like that, right? And now it's a, it's a diameter that's perpendicular to that chord, and that means that it's going to bisect it. And so if I know the whole thing is 12 units across, that means... Um, that this bit will be six units. Okay, and now I've got what I need in order to find the radius. I can use Pythagorean theorem from here. So the trick is drawing the radius in in a um, in a convenient position so that you form a right triangle. So it becomes the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Okay, so now a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, six and eight are the legs. If you know your Pythagorean triples, you might be able to see what C is going to equal. Um, but if you didn't notice that, that's okay. You can always go through with the formula. So I've got the square root of 100, which is going to be 10. I need it to be a positive distance. Okay. So the C, really, this is the, my C was R. So I really should have written R in all the way down here. But this is the radius, right? Because that's the hypotenuse of that triangle there. Okay. All right, and then the last problem. Um, this one is a multiple choice, and it asks which of these congruence relations is not necessarily true. So what I'm going to do is go through them one by one and just check if I know that they're true or not based on the given info.
okay? So first it says PQ is congruent to QN. So PQ is right here, QN is here. Those are going to be congruent because I've got a diameter that's perpendicular to them. So that diameter is going to bisect them. So this is definitely true. I'm just going to put a little T there to remind myself that one's true. Let's look at part B. Um, that's a, or option B, NL and LP. Let's see. NL is this, and LP is this. Okay. So there actually isn't a theorem in this section that says that those are congruent, but let's see if we can figure out if they're congruent. So let's look at this triangle and this one. Okay. Now, um, I know I've got right angles because the diameter's um, perpendicular to that part, okay? And I've already got those sides marked congruent. Now, if I were to use um, the reflexive property of congruence, I could say that that is congruent to itself. And then the triangles are congruent by SAS, okay? And since the triangles are congruent, that means the corresponding parts of the triangle are congruent. In other words, CPCTC. So I had to go way back in time. But yeah, those actually are definitely congruent because the triangles are congruent. So uh, option B is definitely true. Okay, let's look at part C. Arc MN is congruent to arc MP. Arc MN is right here. Arc MP is right here. Okay. Now, this diameter bisects this chord, and since the um, diameter bisects that chord, it's also going to bisect the related arc. So that is definitely true as well. So I'm pretty sure I know this one is not by process of elimination, but let's look at, at D. This says PN, arc PN, that's this one right here, um, is congruent to arc PL, so this one. Those two are congruent. Well, that's not necessarily true. If I knew that this chord was congruent to this chord, then I'd be in business. So I could say like this arc and this arc are congruent to each other, but I don't know if those two are or not. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. I can't necessarily say they're true. So D is the option that we're looking for. Okay, and that's it for the practice assignment. I'll see you next time.